welcome back to my channel. It is Flower Friday, which means that it is time for our weekly walkthrough of the garden. There's a lot to see and a lot still yet to come. Each week, I promise you, it'll be different because there's different things blooming. Our roses will be starting out here soon, and then our perennials are also waking up. The daylilies are coming after that, and then I'm adding a ton more of plants to the garden so you don't want to miss any of these Friday, these flower Fridays where we focus on just how the garden is looking. Without further ado, let's take a look. For today's tour, we're going to be starting in the shade garden, which I hardly ever showcase, but I figure I would show you a couple things that are blooming and blooming quite well here in the shade garden. My shade garden is mostly hostas, hellebores, corabels. I have some trilliums, some maypops, some Solomon seal, both the variegated and non-variegated, a stilby, and different ferns. And of course, I have a collection of azaleas. I have some hydrangeas as well, mostly oak leaf, and a couple of Japanese maples. These are blood good Japanese maples. As you can see, we have over here, variety of the things I just told you about. This is the carnival hookra. They seem to really like my garden and do well. This is a native Piedmont azalea. Most of the other ones in the yard have already finished blooming. I have them all along our creek and then all along the driveway as well in the wooded areas. There are some weeds in here. I'm still getting this bed set for the season. This is an orange native azalea, and I'll insert a picture of what it looked like when it was blooming. This is the first year it bloomed, and it was a nice show for the first time. There's no special reasons why, uh, no special reason why I have these pots in here. I just love the um, look of the pots peeking through with the different hosta foliage. So this is a Solomon seal, and it's blooming. This is a trillium, and they're blooming. Both are native plants. Um, we have them here. These are Autumn Brilliance ferns, and they have such lovely contrasting color. Here's another type of fern that has a red stem. And I recently dug those up from along the creek and moved some into this bed. I have some astilbe or astibble here, different hydrangea here, and then an oak leaf here. As you can see the contrast in foliage for the different hostas. And this bed too is edged with stone. It is a long flower bed. And this is a JPK or JKP, I can't remember, I'll put it on the screen, rhododendron. There are three in this bed. There's this one, this one, and that one. They've all bloomed already for the season. But they'll bloom again come fall and you can see they have bloom buds on them again right there. These are Encore Azaleas. <laughs> Don't you just love the vivid color? There are three of them in this bed. Two are currently blooming. One is recovering. Um, more hostas and hellebores and coral bells. This fern is not taking too well to being transplanted, but we'll see. We're supposed to get some rain and hopefully that will do it. Here's some columbine that's just unfurling. Now this was a yellow native azalea and it's already bloomed and I'll insert footage of it as well. And so that's all we're going to focus on today for this shade garden bed. This area of the shade garden bed really struggles and that's because it doesn't get enough shade. It gets enough, it's getting more sun than when I first installed this bed and that's because this tree here lost a limb and when it lost a limb 
once a certain time of day hits, uh, this is in full sun. And so I'm going to have to dig up these things and replace them with full sun items. But um, it's not a priority on my list at the moment. So it's going to wait probably until the fall. We come over here to this flower bed that's by the vegetable garden and I want you to see how lovely this scene is. Isn't that pretty? With those two encore azaleas in the back, the pop of the carnival um, coral bells and those contrasting foliage of the hostas and then the pièce de résistance. This bowl of beauty peony has opened and it is such a showstopper. I mean, look at it. So, so pretty. And many more buds on it to come. We have Nepeta that's already starting to bloom. And these are all daffodil and tulip foliage. I leave them there and then eventually they'll turn brown and I'll pull them out. But in the meantime, they stay to get enough energy for next season. Tulips don't, but I leave them anyway and just pull them out when they are ready. This is a crazy love rose. You see all the buds on it. That hydrangea is just doing really well. So this bed is looking really good at the moment. Just waiting for a few more things to bloom. Last tour we had white irises in this bed that were blooming and they're done. These is it's called dangerous mood so I'm waiting for it it's never bloomed and you can clearly see it's happy and it's going to bloom this season excuse the dirty bird bath I want to get some quick cement and give it a light coating and then fill it up I ask uh, because it's leaking then over here we have a we have a mama car, uh, mama cardinal nesting in the bed. You can see her tail right here. I'm not going to disturb her, and we'll move over here. The father giller we noticed the last time is done blooming but these lavender irises are giving us a nice show it's the first time blooming in this bed another thing blooming over here is this iris for the first time called concertina isn't she a beauty she is just stunning We're going to have some pretty blooms on her. This is a stiletto rose that's not quite ready to bloom yet. These purple blooms are all Virginia wort. It's a native plant and every year I try to get rid of it and every year it comes back with a vengeance. I've been battling it for years and years and it just seems to spread. So I know native is best but native can be thuggish and this is one native plant I regret ever adding to the garden. This is a wine and roses, Wygilla. Isn't she pretty? Look how beautiful she is that duchess of edinburgh clematis is all butted up and she'll be going soon over here we have a dutch iris this is a dutch iris in this pretty purple i also have the white and then this iris over here is called orange petals 
but I'll show you some more that's currently open when we get there. We have some white irises blooming. Next to this generous gardener, or no, the shepherd, um, shepherdess rose. This is what this is, shepherdess rose. Look how many buds she has on her. Can't wait. This lilac bush was blooming last tour. More white iris. And this is our Edgeworthia. It's putting on its leaves for the summer. Those are all native flowers. I don't want to get rid of them. So I let them bloom each year. This is a coral charm peony that's just finished blooming so I'm waiting I'll insert a picture of what it looked like when it was blooming and then now as it was going out this is a Jacmani clematis see how pretty that's going to be when it's all covered with those purple flowers This Westerland rose over here starting to open. Look, it's got a couple of buds that's um, almost there. This is a carding mill rose and she is also full of buds. I recently planted these and they're doing well. Also have a few things over here blooming. Let me show you. There is this Southern Charm Verbascum. There we are. You can see what it looks like. Isn't she pretty? There's one on the other side over here. It's not blooming yet. I divided this daylily because it was so big there. And there's a foxglove right here getting ready to bloom. Look at Miss Peggy Martin, y'all. Do you see all those rose blooms? And then over here, we have some more irises blooming. And my first amaryllis is getting ready to bloom. This is an apple blossom. More irises. I am getting ready to do an iris tour for you, how to care for them, how to plant them, when to divide them, all of that. This one was so heavy it fell over. In this bed we have some daffodils. The last of our daffodils are these tiny white ones that bloom this time of year. And they make a nice companion to these lavender irises. One of my neighbor, when I lived in Alabama, gave me these. I have them several places in the yard. Some more Dutch irises over there. It's a peony. And this is Crown Princess Margarita Rose. Look at she is almost ready to open but not quite so we'll be having a rose tour soon these irises were given by a friend miss carolyn actually and then so this area of the garden i'm really liking at the moment with the clematis and the irises and the same thing on this side with more irises to bloom still. We do have over here some of our native roses and because the forsythia was in the way I didn't get to prune it as well as I'd like to this season but the blooms are beautiful and they smell heavenly. I'm going to harvest some of these petals and make rose water and um, just so so beautiful there are two different types on this trellis this is 
a Dr. Ruppel, and this is Nellie Moser. Nellie Moser died all the way back to the ground this year, so she's just making her comeback, but she's doing it with a vengeance because you can see here she is. Um, so, look pretty. This one has not bloomed yet. It's coming, and then you can see the other one is coming up from the bottom. This golden celebration rose is almost there. And this peony is almost here too. Maybe next week's walkthrough, you will see it in bloom. There is an Encore Azalea, Autumn Brilliance. It's in bloom too. I need to add some water to the bird bath. As you can see, I added a paver to it. Need to clean it out again. That woodland phlox is looking ever so, so pretty. And you can see all the hostas. All the hostas are looking lovely. And coral bells are finally coming into their own. There's one here, there, and over there. Oak leaf hydrangea is looking good there too. Right here, right here. We still have the remnants of the native azaleas still blooming, but they are almost done. These are all native azaleas here going out across the creek. The snowball bushes or viburnums are also, you see hubby over there working, the snowball bushes or the viburnums are also almost done. The blooms are starting to turn brown, but they bloom from a nice, for a nice, for a nice long time. See all these drift roses covered in buds. Another week or two back here will not look the same. You can see since the last time we edged with rocks all the way out and it gives a nice definition to this bed. There's another snowball bush here and this is a mock orange or a Japanese, no, an English dogwood is another name or a Philadelphia is another name for it. So all these different names. All the white irises back here have bloomed. This one is yellow. It's getting ready to bloom. On this trellis, this is Zephyrin Druin Rose, and I'm getting blooms this year. It's the second year in the garden, so one, two, three that are opened already and looking good. I bought them last year as a two-pack from Home Depot. Hello, Mr. Lizard right here. Hello to you. Nobody's bothering you, right? There's a big old weed right here. I need to come back and spend some more time in this bed. I had gotten some of it done. Good boy, oh boy. Did y'all just see the hummingbird come up to me? If not, did you hear it? Literally, because I'm wearing a dress, right, that had these embroidered flowers, and I think it thinks that I'm a flower. So it came to me. I'm very, very enthralled by hummingbirds. But you can see all the vetch, which is a weed here. This is also a snowball bush. It's doing better than it used to do, but it's getting too much shade. So I may dig it up and move it. We are now at the part of our tour where we're by the shed beds. And I want you to see there's, some, there's a snowball bush back there. But look at this dianthus, y'all. This is a Gara, and that Sunshine Ligustrum, look at how, it's a southern living plant. Look at how radiant that plant is. Just blooms its little head off. This is a Spirea. Look at the lizard on top of that snowball bush. Don't give me the side eye. There's that 
pot with Dian um, Dianthus again. But this spirea is getting ready to bloom. Other things blooming at the moment are these. This is this Baptisia. This is a Cherries Jubilee Baptisia. And these are a yellow and white iris like the one on the other side of the house. This is another Gara here. More Dianthus and Pansies. Here's another native rose. Let me show you the bloom up close. They smell so, so good. So, so good. So pretty. This is that orange petal iris. Look at it. Isn't that stunning? So, so pretty. Remember last tour we looked at the double weeping peach. Here it is. I'm trying to decide how to take you. Let's go this way. Here is another type of iris blooming. I'm going to put the names of all of these on the screen when we um, when I edit the video so that you can have them. My dappled willow is looking lovely. And my Julia child rose is coming along. This is a orange iris. I don't know what the name of it is. This is more of those orange petal irises. And this knockout rose, look at all the buds. My Siberian irises in this bed are currently just going to town. I'm going to actually divide this and put some in the front border and the back border. Isn't that pretty? And those are some yellow flag irises that I try to keep confined to this area of the garden. I pull them out every so often. And my red bud has leafed out. I just love the leaves on this thing. Imagine being a tree and your leaves are heart shaped. And then look at the ferns among the lilies. We'll look at this side of the memorial garden. See the rose bushes are looking just as lovely and loaded with buds. These are lemon meringue baptisia. This is a purple iris that a friend Jessica gave me. Bolero rose. These are yellow and white ones that my other neighbor gave me. Then in these pots I have sweet peas. You can see it here and then here. So I need to get my trellises in these pots this week. Back to the yellow and white irises that my neighbor gave me. They're stunning. Just love this shot right here. Right here. So, so pretty. And the roses. Excuse the mess. I've been cleaning out the flower beds. And I am going to... I keep being bitten by something, y'all. I'm so sorry. Irises. Daylilies. Penstemon. Roses. All along here. These are those heirloom rows I was telling you about. So, so, so good. More of those purple roses, um, irises, excuse me. It's a 
let's start over here and do the front border this way. I gotta mow the lawn tomorrow. So we start off with a wine and roses. We start off with a wine and roses by Jilla. And move over here to this lovely iris. I have no idea what the name is. It was supposed to be Cupid's Kiss, but it's not Cupid's Kiss, but it's pretty. And it goes really well with the irises. You'll notice that most of the ones in my yard are purple. Look, Cherry's Jubilee, Baptisia, another one right here. This is a nine bark, summer wine nine bark. And it's finally loving its life now that we've cut these trees that were here. It's starting to do a little bit of growth this year. See more of those purple irises from my friend Sue. My friend Sue sent these from Tennessee for me and I sent her some. So she has some of mine in her garden and I have some of hers in my garden and I like that. I don't mind trading and we both end up enlarging. These are more sweet peas that need to be trellised. All five pots here has some and the three over here has some. Here's some more irises. Looking lovely. Oh, and that's another Zephyrin rose. That was sent to me by my friend. Her name is Amaryllis. And she sent me this Zephyrin as a present. And it's actually growing and has a couple of blooms on it. More Dianthus. I'm gonna actually shift that further to the front, like this patch. That clematis there is so pretty. I'll put a picture to show you what it looks like um, closer up. More of these daffodils. And then of course, more of the nepeta that's blooming. This is Walker's Low Nepeta. That's a pancake arborvitae. Of course, this is the other side of the Memorial Garden and there are irises here that I transplanted early this January and they're still going to bloom. They look a little decrepit because they were transplanted out of season, wasn't the right time, but they're still going to bloom. So I'm happy for that next year. They'll look better and I'll be happier with me. More irises coming. These are pink. I think those are called pink fascination. More clematis. And the clematis back there is blooming nicely. They're supposed to be red, but they're purple and white. So I will take it because they look lovely against the penstemon and this plum tree. Look at these irises here getting ready to bloom as well more of that pink fascination iris this spot i need to be adding a few more things to kind of help it it's too bald for me i like to not have to mulch so i plant everything closely and then i don't have to mulch my eden rose is finally going to bloom it's on this trellis and it's actually growing there are, i think three or four buds on it it also has a little may mermaid clematis i'm going to show you what that looks like I almost killed it last year. Well, first the storm knocked over the trellis, this one, they used to be back here. It knocked it over, it snapped in half, then I stepped on it and I just kind of left it and then moved it in the winter months and it seems to be doing okay. Here's another Cherry's Jubilee Baptisia right here. And another wine and roses, Wygilla.
I hardly have to weed, but I do have some weeds like vetch. But I'll come by later, pull that out, then I'm good for a little bit. And this is what it is. There's not much blooming down here, but big Bertha honey. This oak leaf hydrangea, she is covered, covered with blooms. I moved her a couple of years ago and it took her that long to settle back in. But honey, she is letting me know that she is loving her life right here. And I am all set for it. I'm excited about it and I cannot wait. I want her to screen because our neighbors garden right here and they're a lot of times there. So I want her to fill in and act like a privacy screen. I may even put a couple of evergreens back there, but they don't like shade. I just want to screen us from them on our patio. So um, this is also another bird bath that I'm going to add a cement layer to. I need to get a paver for it, get this area finalized. I want some pavers or bricks to go under here, but we'll see. This is one of me. This is autumn starburst or sunburst on Corazalia. It's finally liking where I have it. So hopefully it'll do well this year. This is a uh, floribunda rose, just a white. Isn't that pretty? And Miss Sarah Bernhardt peony is probably going to be open the next time we take a walk. Look at her. We have more of those purple irises. That's a dahlia. One dahlia. Look how much it has grown. There's another one in there. And my friend, excuse the mess, I got to come back through and clean up. My friend Vanessa of Boyer and Co, B O Y E R and Co, sent this rose for me because I wanted to have a grouping of three of the sweet mademoiselle. Been looking for it here locally and hadn't been able to find it and she had it in her stores. So this is a sweet mademoiselle rose and these are sweet mademoiselle rose so eventually it's going to get as big as these and it'll be this trio behind the fountain to give it the same color um, what I want that the same look. These snapdragons are going to be blooming. Oh they are blooming. Look at the color on that, playing with this dianthus and these pansies. Like I said, I planted sweet peas in the pot, so I need to get them trellised. I have to come and clean out the bird baths. The dogwood blooms are in there. It needs to be cleaned out. I'll use the shop vac to take all the water out and fill it up with clean water, add my algae stopper, and I'll be good. I'll add algae stopper once a week, and it works. It's safe for the birds, safe for the insects, and everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today as we took our weekly walk through the garden. As always, if you've enjoyed my content, please consider subscribing. Until next time, happy gardening.